Are you able to see on your on your screen? Yes. Great. Give me a second. Do you understand all that which I had explained in your previous class, Vita? Yes. Great. Do you revise that also? Yes. Okay. One more important thing that do you see that video that I had uploaded on my channel regarding to your class? No, sir. I was going to check today or tomorrow. Oh, no, no, no problem, no problem. Whenever that you have free time, then you can go through there. And in order to revise that, you can revise all. So let's just start the next one. In physics, we were studying speed, velocity, and acceleration a little bit. Yeah. Do you understand clearly about speed, velocity, and acceleration? Yes. Okay, so a round off, I can explain that to you. Speed that is defined as the ratio of distance to the time. Velocity, it's a unit that means meter per second. Velocity, that is also defined as the ratio of displacement to the time and also contains unit of meter per second. That's why we can say that velocity and ratios are a little bit same of, okay? having same SI unit. Acceleration, that is the very important topic. Acceleration, that means uh, ratio of rate of change of uh, velocity, okay? Or you can also yeah. understand in this way, that means the change in velocity per unit time, that is defined as a ratio, okay? You can also yes. understand in this way, suppose that um, you are with your family and you are moving, uh, and car and your car is running at this time okay suppose that you are moving in your car at this time your car is moving 60 kilometer per hour okay yes and then suddenly that you your father consider that uh, uh, we are getting late and then your mom will suggest him to increase the speed or velocity so within three or four seconds okay that speed would like to accelerate and now speed is 90 kilometer per hour okay yes so in that condition you can get your acceleration why before velocity previous velocity was your 60 kilometer per hour this time now your car is running at 90 kilometer per hour and you accelerate from 60 to 19 four second apply the formula okay formula is that change uh, change in velocity upon time taken but most important thing is that your velocity that is in kilometer per hour okay yes wait a second i am opening my graphic tablet give me a second so that i can explain you yeah, just see on your screen. Suppose that initial velocity, are you able to see on your screen? Yes. Initial velocity, that was your 60 kilometer per hour, okay? Yes. Final velocity, final velocity, that is your 90 kilometer per hour. That means initial velocity, that means the velocity in which you was moving before. Final velocity, that means the velocity in which you are moving now, okay? And the time taken, time taken, that is equals to four second, okay? Most important thing is that acceleration, acceleration equals to Change in velocity, change in velocity upon time taken, time taken. But one more important thing, here you can see that 
acceleration fundamental unit that is your meter per second square meter per second square okay but you can see that your um, velocity that is given in kilometer per hour okay so you have to convert both of them into meter per second so just to change velocity into meter per second you have to multiply by 5 by 18 that is 60 multiplied by 5 by 18 okay yes then you will get here um 6 10 the 60 6 3 the 18 you'll get 50 by 3 meter per second now 90 is given that means also you can do that 90 multiplied by 5 by 18 9 10 za, 9 2 za, it will be 50 by 2 okay that's it it is meter per second now you can plug in your values over here so that means final velocity minus initial velocity change in velocity that means final minus initial okay yes so uh, yeah i'm writing that one so that you can understand very clearly so final final velocity min minus initial okay velocity upon time taken so plug in your values over here that is 50 by 2 minus 50 by 3 upon time that is in four second okay now your velocity change in velocity that is in meter per second and your time that is in second okay it is the appropriate way to plug in your values into your formula okay what's your formula formula that is your acceleration equals to change in velocity upon time taken okay yes yeah so that means it will be okay now you can calculate that one a uh, little bit change color so numerator firstly you have to solve 3 to the 6 5 to the 15 minus 5 to the 10 100 so I'll get there and uh, overall divided by 4 now you will get here uh, 50 and this 6 will come downwards 50 divided by 6 4 is 24 okay a little bit you can reduce that one it will be 24 12 25 and then it will be 12 to the 25 2 1 by 12 meter per second square okay yes or in decimal you can write that 2 and uh, point zero eight meter per second square do you understand that yes great so now up to four page that we had completed so now i'm going to reflect so that uh, you like to come on page number five Hold on. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, yes. Yes. Next is your velocity time graph continued. Okay. So here, as usual, you are seeing a graph on your screen. Here is your velocity. Here is your time. As I explained that in your previous class that time that will be on x-axis and velocity which will be on y-axis okay or time that will be on horizontal axis or velocity that will be on vertical axis okay first of all you are seeing that it is a straight line which you are seeing a little bit means a, a light a blue color triangle okay in this one you can see that clearly it starts from 0 and up to 8. So here of seeing this graph, you can clearly understand that firstly, velocity is increasing, okay? 
Yes. That means in four second object is moving eight meter. Okay, okay. Yes. Understand? Yes. And then next you are seeing that graph is parallel to y uh, x axis. Okay. That means yes. now now velocity is constant. Okay. Now velocity is constant, but time is running over there. Okay. Yes. Clear? Yes. Yes, that's great. Area of light blue triangle. Yes. So simply that if you want to find the area of light blue triangle, so simply you can apply the area of triangle formula. That means uh, half times base into height. So height is your eight. Base is your four. Okay. So it was yes. a 32 divided by 2 that will be 16. Okay, so 16 meter you can see that it is the area of light blue. Okay, and then dark if you want to calculate. So dark is in the shape of rectangle. Okay, so length that will be 8 and breadth that will be 6. So 8, 6 are 48. So 48 meter that will be your area of dark blue okay so if they would like to ask you that area of whole graph so simply you have to add that 16 plus 48 that will give you 64 do you understand that yes great so this is the total area under the distance time graph this area is distance this area is the total distance covered by the object clear yes Great. So come to next page. Next is very, very, very important topic. That is your scalar and vector quantities. Okay. So yeah. Scalar quantities. Okay. You can understand that scalar quantity. That means quantity which has only magnitude but no direction okay which has only magnitude but no direction for example you can take that mass of your body okay mass of your body fundamentally you know that mass equals to amount of matter which a substance contain that is your mass okay and so that means there is no direction so that is defined as scalar quantity okay so you have yes. to understand fundamentally that a scalar quantity that means the quantity that has magnitude but no direction okay that is your scalar quantity and vector quantity that means the quantity which has magnitude as well as direction okay that is acceleration okay that is acceleration that you can say that 20 2 meter per second square in northeast direction okay yes. or simply you can understand that force if you will apply force so you will have to say that i am applying 10 newton of force in i am applying 10 newton of force in south direction or north direction or any in any particular direction okay yes always remember that scalar quantity has only magnitude but no direction but vector quantity that has both magnitude and direction okay yes all these examples that you are seeing with respect to a scalar quantity you can see also here a scalar quantity having only magnitude okay so these yes. you are seeing distance, speed, time, power, energy. That is your scalar quantities. Because you can understand that they contain magnitude. Distance that means 10 kilometer, 5 kilometer, 2 meter, okay, 5 centimeter. But there is no description of uh, means direction. Okay. Yes. Speed. Speed that means suppose that uh you are coming from your school okay and then within 
10 minutes that you reach to your school, then your mom would like to ask you that, oh my God, very quickly that you came to home. So what is your speed? What was your speed? So they don't say that a uh, mom maybe 30 kilometer per hour, or 40 kilometer per hour. But is it possible that at the same time that you will say that mom 40 kilometer per hour in northeast direction? No, because she is asking about the speed. She is not asking about uh, direction. So that's why that only you have to say that is speed. She is asking about a speed. Simply you have to say that 20 kilometer per hour, 30 kilometer per hour, 40 kilometer per hour, or anything else. Okay? Yes. Time. Time. That means always we generally use to consider that in second hour, minute, or any else, okay? But it's not possible that to define direction also there, okay? Yes. Power. Power means you are applying force on any object, okay? Yes. But there is no explanation of power over there. Oh, sorry, no explanation of direction over there, okay? Yes. Energy. Suppose that you have energy in your body, okay? Is it possible that you can define the direction of your uh, energy in your body? No. No. Yes, because that in which direction that energy is storing or in which direction that energy is flowing, you don't know about or you can't tell about. Clear? Yes. Great. Now, yes, so simply what I mean to explain all over there that <coughs> Scalar quantities, they don't have direction. They only contains magnitude. Vector quantities, they have both magnitude and direction. Yes. Okay. So what is magnitude? So most important thing is that magnitude tells us the size of a vector. Okay. Magnitude tells us the size of vector and also what is direction direction that means Simple direction direction means direction Okay, that means in which in which direction that you are moving. Okay, or in which direction that is uh, Displacing so displacement that is your fundamental vector quantity Velocity that is also I means suppose that with respect to displacement you took one and you took an object and you put that on in another direction okay then your mom would like to ask you that where you put that then you will show in that direction okay that mom yes. i put that article over there okay so that means in that condition that you when you displace when you change the position of that object from one position to another and when your mom would like to ask you, then you will be able to explain her that where you put that and what is the direction. Also, you would like to indicate. Okay. Next one is velocity. Suppose that you are moving in a plane. Okay. So, and if the plane uh, operator would like to ask about, uh, ask about the position of plane to the pilot, then pilot uh, would like to say that 900 kilometer per hour or 900 miles per hour in northeast direction. Okay. If if operator will ask that what is your position? Okay. Regarding to plane, I am talking about. Okay. Then 100% you would uh, then 100% that pilot will say, okay, that we are flying at 900 miles per hour in northeast direction clear yes. so that means when you are explaining about velocity then also direction will be there that's why it is known as vector quantity okay, okay. As acceleration acceleration that means you are suppose that the previous example that what we have taken that with respect to acceleration and suppose that you are moving with your family in car okay so if suppose yeah. if suppose that a little bit your uh, means yeah. grandfather or anyone would like to ask you that uh, 
what is your acceleration okay so you would like to say that my acceleration is 10 meter per second square in south direction okay or in east direction okay so acceleration that means in which direction you are enforcing your object okay you are accelerating yes. your object clear yes weight as usual i told you that weight is also your weight uh no no beta i think that weight is yeah weight is also your means uh, vector quantity because you can see that weight that means mass into mass into gravity okay the formula of weight hold on i explained you mass mass equals to amount of matter matter and object contains okay contains secondly what is weight 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 is def uh, defined as weight that is product of product of mass and gravity okay yes yes so fundamentally you can understand by the formula w equals to mg okay it is your formula of weight you can also understand this one weight regarding to uh, this like uh, suppose that you are sitting on a chair okay sitting on a chair yes. at that condition at that condition your your uh, your body that contains mass but your total mass that will be directed downwards okay yes downwards so mass that is 40 kg and direction that is downwards that's why weight is known as vector quantity okay yes do you understand that yes next one is your momentum momentum uh means fundamentally that i am explaining all this to you so that when i will explain in deep manner to you then at that time you will be able to consider that yes sir on that class that you explained that to me a little bit about that okay that's why that i am explaining all these terms which you are seeing on your screen okay so that means the next one is a momentum 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 is defined as the product of product of mass and velocity okay yeah yes so that means clearly you can understand it is defined as the letter p okay velocity yes. defined by defined by letter p okay so simply you can understand that p wait p equal wait firstly i have to write in written means in word format that means it will be like uh, momentum equals to momentum equals to mass into velocity okay yes that is it will be equals to that uh, yeah it is equals to p equals to m into v or you can write that p equals to mv okay it is your momentum yes. okay yes if an object that is in motion okay if an object is in motion then regarding to its mass there will be momentum okay yes momentum means you can also understand that in a very easy manner suppose that you are running you are moving in a car okay and yes there is a truck just beside you okay so whose momentum will be maximum definitely truck okay why because that weight is greater than the car okay understand yes. yeah that's weight 
is yes. greater than car also a little bit momentum that varies with respect to its velocity or speed okay so why because suppose that your car is moving at 100 km per hour and the weight of your car wait hold on hold on hold on i can tell you that in a very convenient way about momentum suppose that car car and there is truck truck okay then car weight that is 600 kg and its weight is 1200 kg okay and car is moving at 90 km per hour and truck is moving like 40 km per hour okay so in this way you can clearly understand that whose momentum that will be maximum okay yes whose momentum that will be maximum so six nine are 54 three zero will be there okay and it will be 1200 48 and then 30 will also be there so now you can see that 54,000 is greater than 48,000 so in that condition car momentum that will be greater when it will move at a speed of 90 km per hour okay so here you can ask me a question that sir just before you told me that whose weight will be maximum that's momentum will also be maximum but 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 momentum also varies with velocity okay yes do you understand that yes i do great now speed that is yeah vector quantity is changed yeah this is very important thing which you have to learn that fundamental factors on which the vector quantities depend okay or when it will change so vector quantities that will change when their magnitude will change okay yes when their magnitude will change and next is when their direction will change okay then vector quantity that will change also and next is when both will change that is magnitude and direction okay Yes. Means either magnitude will change, then vector quantity will change, either direction will change, then also vector quantity will change, or the condition in which both magnitude and direction will change, then the quantity will also change. Okay? Means vector quantity will also change. Clear? Yes. Oh, very good. But are you understanding all that which I am explaining this to you? Yes very good so speed is a scalar quantity as i explained that to you so speed that means just before i explain with the help of your example that suppose if your mom is asking to you that you reach school you reach from school to home within five minutes so what was your speed then only you will have to say that 30 km per hour okay so it is not possible to say that in which direction that you move okay suppose that your it is you can understand in this way suppose that your school is over here okay yes yes and then your house is here okay and then you would like to move like this 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 this, this and this okay so 100 percent you can see there that it is not it is not possible for you to define the exact direction that means in which way that you move okay yes in which way that you move and in which direction you move okay because yes. each and every time the direction of your path that is getting changed understand that's why yes. that well speed that is your scalar quantity understand yes yes also a scalar quantity that means suppose that there is a geostationary satellite is in orbit above earth it moves at a constant speed but its velocity is co constantly changing okay so that's yes. why yeah understand 
Secondly, yes. the difference in two vector quantities that also you have to understand that final vector minus initial vector beta. Okay, so suppose that you can also understand this one in this way. Suppose that two vectors are two vectors are V1 and V2. Okay, so change in vector or difference in vector may be defined as del V. Okay. This yes. this triangle that defines difference. Okay, so del V equals to V2 minus V1. Okay. Yes, where you can understand that V1 that is your initial vector. Initial and V2 is your final. Okay. Yes, so that's why I did also here that change in vector that is initial ve final vector minus initial vector okay or you can also understand that always it will be larger value minus a smaller value yes understand that beta yes great now um yes next is Okay, I explained this one to you. Now I am going to refresh. Do you understand all that beta which I had explained? Yes. So let's see that what next page that is. I think we had complete all the six page. So there is a test regarding to this one. So there are few questions which you have to give answer i am asking to you one by one okay questions you okay. are questions you are seeing on your screen and then regarding to scaling of 10 i will understand that how much you understand whatever that i explained over here so what are the units of mass um kilograms great what is the formula of average speed? Distance moved divided by time taken. Distance moved divided by time taken. Very good. What is the vertical axis in the distance time graph? Distance traveled from start. Distance traveled from the start. What is the vertical axis in the distance time graph? Distance traveled from the from start, okay? Okay. Um, so, the fast. Pardon? Um, a steady speed. What you are saying? Oh wait. For the next question, you are asking answer. What does a steep line correspond? to a distance time graph a fast steady speed okay yes. how is velocity different from speed um how is velocity different from speed um velocity is the speed in a given direction Velocity is the speed in given direction. Mm. What is the formula of acceleration? Um, acceleration that is change in velocity divided by time taken change in velocity divided by time taken great what is the vertical axis in the speed time graph the velocity of an object okay what is the vertical axis in the speed time graph you are saying velocity of the object Yes. Okay. What does a downwards what does a downward line correspond 
in a speed time graph. Constant decora deceleration. Yeah, deceleration. Constant deceleration. Very good. What does the area beneath a velocity time graph represent? Um, it represents the distance traveled. Good. A car increases its velocity from 5 meter to 15 meter per second. Sorry. 5 meter to 15 meter in 3 seconds. What is its acceleration? Do you have pen and copy? Yes. Yeah, just to solve this question. Um, is it 3.3 meters per second squared? 3.3 meter per second square? Yes. Okay. So, do you think that all the answers that you gave me, that's correct? Yes. Okay. So, let's check your progress. Fantastic. You got 10 out of 10. Wow, I was expecting this. Very good. Thank very you. good. It shows that whatever that I explained that to you in your class, you understand completely. Completely you understand. Very good, Vita. So your first topic, your first topic related to distance, speed, velocity, and acceleration that is completed this video also i will upload within few hours on my channel anytime that you will be able to see whatever that you understand that whatever that is in this topic everything that you can see over there also whatever your test that is it will be also a type of means some motivation to all other students who would like to see it so I am calling within one second to you because your call is recording. So I have to yes. skip this one. Okay. Give me one second. Okay.